Hi everyone. Thanks for joining me today. My name is Yvette Ricard. I am the marketing coordinator for Beadalon in Artistic Wire. Thanks for joining me today. Um, I'm usually behind the scenes. I'm the one usually in the chat room with Meredith Roddy, who you might have seen doing the jewelry making classes for Michaels. Um, she's the jewelry expert and I've somehow been summoned to do this project for you guys uh, talking about wire string art. So um, a little story behind everything. Um, like I said, I was, I'm the marketing coordinator, so I'm always looking for creative ways to use our products. Artistic wire is actually a silver wire like this, and I'll go into details about this later. Um, but as you all know, during quarantine and being stuck at home, we kind of discovered uh, or tried to discover new ways to entertain ourselves. And crafting was apparently one of mine. Um, it's been subdued over the past couple of years, so it kind of forced me to tap into my creative self um, during that time at home. And I realized that hammering nails into wood was very therapeutic. Um, so I gravitated toward it and just kind of found this new craft and, and I loved it. And it, it's honestly just so much fun and it's easy. Unlike jewelry, who it's, it's sometimes very symmetrical and you need techniques and everything, um, string art is very kind of it can make it your own and there's no right or wrong way to do it. So uh, I just went with it and um, here we are today. So we actually had, um, I had commissioned a Etsy designer to do a piece for us, custom made for display in our trade show earlier this year. Obviously when we were allowed to travel and do trade shows and everybody that came into our booth loved the design. It was string art made with artistic wire. And we didn't even think anything of it. We were just like, oh, that's just a piece of art. And, you know, we loved it, but we had so many customers just ask about it and, and want projects and, and try to learn how to do it. So I actually taught myself how to do it. I've never done string art before. So I never did it in summer camps or in, in crafts or in school or anything like that. So I just looked up on YouTube like everybody else does and, and figured out how to do it and was just kind of self-taught. So. Speaking of YouTube, this uh, class will be recorded, is being recorded, and will be available on the Michaels YouTube channel um, within 24, 48 hours, and also on the Michaels website. So feel free to watch it later. If you can't sit through the whole thing, just tune back and, and rewatch it. And you can share it with your friends too. Um, let's see, I guess that's, oh no, let me talk a little bit about the products that we are talking about. First, let me show you the project, that might help, right? So we're doing this little project here. I'm calling it Home is Where the Heart Is. And I thought that was kind of cute considering we were all stuck at home and obviously home is where the heart is. So it's kind of like an easy project with the Swarovski crystal heart in the middle. Um, so this is done on a wood slice and I'll go into details with that. And um, it's pretty easy. Like I, I, I don't wanna keep emphasizing the obvious, but once you'll see the steps and and look at the instructions, which I think Meredith has already done and shared it in the chat. By the way, everybody's muted. So if you do have any questions, please ask them in the chat and Meredith will answer them. And if she can't answer it, then she'll just interrupt me and I'll be happy to answer your question. Um, okay, so a little bit about us as a company. Beadalon is a, a wire manufacturer. We make all our wires here in the United States, actually outside of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And we, cater to them for jewelry making. So you'll see our products, all our products in Michaels and it's in the jewelry making section. Um, but I thought it was really fun to see how our products can also be used in other crafts outside of jewelry. So we feel like this is a, a, a fun, easy project to do. You can do it with your kids, obviously make sure that the sharp objects are being supervised <laughs> by an adult. Um, or you could do it yourself like in the Zoom like craft uh, night or something like that and everybody's hammering away. I kind of sing the, the theme song from MC Hammer, Hammer Time and do a little dance as I'm doing it. This is a fun thing, I don't know. Why. Anyways, um, let's get to it. So let's go over the pod, the supplies. Grisha, if you wanna do the overhead and I'll swing you over here. Okay. So these are the supplies that we're using. Um, first is the wood surface. And this is from Walnut Hollow and they have different surfaces. This is actually a wood slice 
This is the small size. Um, and they have it in medium and large size. And they also have other like large surfaces, uh, square without the bark. But I thought this was kind of fun because it has a little more rustic feel to it. And you can paint this, but in this project, we're just gonna do it raw and plain. Okay, so there's that. We have our wire, of course. This is artistic wire. This is non, this is tarnished resistant silver. And this is 26 gauge. So little, little information session on gauges. The way we measure wire is, is by gauge, not by thickness of the, not by, um, by inches or anything like that. So everything, when you, when you hear gauge, the term gauge is usually done with uh, soft or, or medium tempered or hard tempered wire. So this is actually a copper wire with a color coding, um, enamel coating on it. So it's soft, it's a soft tempered wire. So it's very uh, malleable. And you'll see that here. This is how it looks outside the package. So it's really soft and it's very thin. So when you hear wire instead of string and you wonder, well, that's gonna be really hard to do. It's actually not, it's really soft and bendy like this. So 26 gauge is the one that we're using for our project today, but it's also available in different gauges. I'll, this is just an example of the thinner gauge, which is 30 gauge. So the higher the number, the thinner the wire is. So you can see this is like paper thin here. Like I, you really have to see it close by. So that's 30 gauge. And we have it even up to 10 gauge. I don't have a 10 gauge here, but this is a 12 gauge, just to give you an example of the thickness. See the, di the difference is there. So the lower the number, the thicker it is, the higher the number, the thinner it is. Okay, so that's the wire. So the, the artistic wire comes in many colors. Um, we have it in silver plated, like any color under the rainbow, but at Michael's, they have it in the popular silver color. Okay, so we have that. We have your nails, and you can get this like at Home Depot, Lowe's, your hardware store. We're using the three quarters of an inch length. And the 18 means the gauge, again, 18. So that's actually the thickness of, of the nail, okay? Have your handy dandy little hammer. Um, you can raid your, your boyfriend or your husband's toolbox and get his hammer, which I've come to realize are kind of like really big and heavy. So uh, Michael's does have hammers as well. And I found this online, I thought it was really cute. So it's nice and light, so you can get in there um, pretty good with this hammer. And then we're gonna need a cutter for your wire. And this is a nipper tool. Um, these are actually, uh, it's underneath here, but these are actually little tool grips that are available on Michael's online. Um, I think they're called Huggies. I'm not, I'm not quite sure. I forgot the name, fashion grips are the names of these, um, which makes it kind of easier to handle. So it's like little koozies for your tools, um, but you need a wire nipper tool. And you notice like there's an angle right there to get into the, to get, to cut, do a nice clean cut on your wire. Um, we have a long nose pliers, long needle nose pliers. So these are a little different than what you will see in the beading section at Michael's. These are hardware um, type, like you buy this at the hardware store because they have the teeth. And this is optional, you don't need this, um, but I find it very useful because it holds the nails in place and sometimes you can get carried away with hammering and I've uh, hammered my fingers a few times and it's not very pleasant. So you could actually hold the nail in place and with the teeth, it grips it and you can hammer it with like a, a grip. And then here's another hack. If you don't have um, pliers like this with the teeth in it, you can also use a crimp tool. Um, if you do have some jewelry tools in your, at home in your studio, you can use a crimp tool because it has a little round hole uh, in the pliers and it lets you hold it in place. And then for the bling, we have a Swarovski crystal heart. This is the 18 millimeter crystal heart and it has a hole on top. So we'll be using that as an embellishment for, for the ornament. And then last but not least, we have a bead mat. And this is, again, you find in the, the beading section. And this is just a little mat, you use it for beading that keeps your beads in place, it doesn't roll off. But I'm using it as a surface for noise reduction. If you don't have a bead mat, a towel would work or a rag or some kind of cloth um, to help reduce the noise. And that's it, let's, let's get started. Okay, I'll move this out of the way. So the instructions have, the ones that Meredith um, has shared in the chat room. 
they have the step-by-step -step projects and I'll just go by everything. But if you have any questions, again, Meredith will answer them for you or I'll, I'll do my best to be um, detailed about everything and try not to rush through. So in the instructions, there is a template that I made for you guys and it has the nail placements. Um, so for this particular project, I'm making it super easy for you. But if let's say you wanted to do another design or if you wanted to do um, your own personal design, all you have to do is just print it out, do it to the size of the surface that you want and just trim it. Um, you're not gonna have the dots obviously, but just do an outline of where you want the nail placements. Um, but this is like the super easy way to get started with string. It tells you exactly where it is. Okay, so I have taken the liberty to cut down that piece, that template, and started um, hammering some of the pieces down, as you can see here. Okay, and again, this is the, the therapeutic part. So don't rush the process. At least for me, I, I enjoyed doing the hammering part. So um, I don't know, maybe it's because I'm a mom of two-year-old twins and I needed to get the aggression out. I don't, I don't know, maybe it's quarantine, maybe it's, it's whatever, but I had no idea that hammering nails was just, it was just very soothing, as ironic as that sounds, right? Okay, so again, I'm using the needle nose pliers to hold the nail in place and I'm just placing it over the dot. See, so I'm just holding it against the flat against the surface here so it doesn't move. And I'm just gonna hammer down a few taps, okay? So this is the, this may be the time consuming process. Again, I try to make it super easy by putting, uh, doing a nail placement for you guys so you don't have to think about the, the placement of everything. And if you don't have a nail template, you just gauge it, like how you far you want the nails to be. So the further away the nails are, the more, uh, what's the words? Empty, I guess the wire is gonna look. And I'll go into the process on, on the, how to wrap the wire around, but it's really up to you, however you want it. And this, this part, there's like no mistakes. Like you can't go wrong. You just nail away. And if some of the nails are not straight, that's okay. Cause it's not gonna be seen. It's gonna be covered with the wire. Okay, everybody with me? Again, if it's crooked, all you gotta do is just trim it back. Because this is actually a basswood. See? So it's a soft wood. Oh, that's another tip. So if you're gonna do something and, or do some string art and you wanna know what kind of wood, I've learned that soft woods are easier, um, like basswood, uh, maple, some of the common wood that you would find at Home Depot or Lowe's. Um, you can get the big sheets and cut them down, um, but the soft wood allows for the nails to go in a lot easier, I found, um, versus the hardwoods. And you also wanna find wood that doesn't have any knots in them. And by knots, I mean, you know, like the ones, the, like these are great because they don't, they're really clean surfaces. Um, but if you see a knot in it, it's fine. You just might want to place your image around it so you don't try to hammer a nail through the knot because that gets really tough and you might split the wood. So we put, well, let me put all these back here. They're not flying around. So all the nails are in. I'm just going to go back and just hammer them all. So they're kind of like the, the same height. And you can kind of gauge by looking sideways and just to make sure all in. Okay, we're done. So all you have to do is just peel this off. We didn't stick this on or anything. The nails held the, the template in place. It's okay if you rip it, because you're not gonna need the pattern. Unless you want to do multiple ones, 
And then obviously you wanna keep it so you can do multiple at a time. Okay, there you go. And if you have any pieces of paper from the template stuck in between on the bottom here, um, all you have to do is just peel them off. Um, but usually it's, it's pretty clean and you don't have to, to worry about that. All right, so now we get our wire. So what I love about string art with the wire is that it kind of gave it a little bit more of a modern feel to kind of like an old craft. And I realize that this is nothing new. It's not a new technique or it's not anything that we haven't seen before. But I don't think many people have explored doing it with, with a shiny wire. And that's what gives it something, a, this little bit more of appeal to me because I like shiny things. So um, it, 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 it was a lot of fun. So the, the key to this is you don't need to do any knots like you would if you're using string or embroidery floss or yarn or thread. All you have to do is because it is wire and it holds a shape, you basically take any nail, right? And you just wrap it around the head of the nail like that, okay? And it holds it in place. Do you guys see? So you think, okay, well, how do I go? What's the pattern? What's the technique? And that's where there is none. This is like the random fill in the gaps kind of thing. And you just, you can either go from each nail back and forth, diagonal, it's however you want it to look. Um, my personal preference is I kind of just like going back and forth as much as I can. And I hold the spool in my hand as it unravels. And you'll notice that there's like a little groove here where it holds the wire in place. So sometimes I may get stuck in that. So I kind of just make sure that I'm feeding the wire through my fingers and it kind of, and using my fingertips to guide it around the nail head back and forth like this. Hey, Yvette. Yes. While you're doing that part, I've got a great question here. What software do you use to draw the template? So I actually, there is actually no real software. I had to do it a lot of it by hand, either through Photoshop. So you take an image and you kind of place the dots manually. Um, I did realize though, however, the Silhouette cutting machine um, has, if you get the business, I think the business version of it or whatever the version above the standard is, there is an option for rhinestone placement. Okay, so if you do the rhinestone placement, now I'm gonna stop here just so I can show you guys. So I came to the end and I'm just going randomly back and forth here, okay? Just so you can follow me as I'm doing this. So yeah, the Silhouette software, if you buy the Silhouette cutting machine and you get that, uh, software upgrade, it does come with a rhinestone placement uh, option where you take an image, uh, a file, and it places rhinestones on the perimeter or fills it up. And that's more like if you're blinging t-shirts or something, but I realized that it works perfectly for also making uh, the nail head templates. So that, that's, my, that's my secret, don't tell anybody. <laughs> Otherwise you could just do it Another way, just take a template and outline and just do a marker of where you want the placement of the nails to be. Um, and that's an easy way. So if you don't have the software, just do it by hand. Hope that answered your question. Okay, so I'm trying to just go back and forth, filling up, making sure every nail head has some wrapping of some sort. Going back up. Oops, sorry if I'm getting out of frame here. So what makes this as a good starting project is it's a small shape to fill. So you really um, don't have to do too much here. Let 
I just realized I'm at towards the end of this spool of wire and I just realized that I did not open this new from the package. That's probably why I'm out of it a little bit here. Um, so I'll open another one in just a second. Okay, so let's say if that happens and you're running out of wire, all you have to do is just wrap the end of the wire around the nail head and then tuck it back in, nobody will see it. I'll open this one here. And then it's tucked into this little slit here. That's what holds it in place. And then keep going. So again, just wrapping the end around the, the nail head and go back and forth. So I've experimented and tried it with different gauges um, with a 24 gauge wire, which is a little bit thicker. Um, it's doable. So if you can't find 26 gauge, a 24 gauge is possible. Um, but I highly recommend if you're gonna do this project to definitely try to do it with a 26 gauge um, because it's, it's so easy to manipulate around the nail heads. So another idea is that you could do is if you wanted to do as a gift, you can do um, like a monogram. You can just type out the letter, like any letter, like the last name, um, initials, then just do like a, I've done it with my last name with an R and have it on display on my mantle at home here. Um, you could do that as like a new baby gift or anniversary gift. Because the fun part about making things is about giving your gifts, right? Especially now at the holidays. Don't tell my family, but everybody's getting some kind of wire string art project for the holidays. So you can determine how full you want the the design to be. Keep going back and forth. Okay, so that's, I think that's pretty good for now. Now, here's the second part. Once you get your shape filled in with the, the amount of wire, like as many times as you want, you basically want to outline the shape. And this is what gives it a little bit more definition to the design. So what I like to do is just basically do um, weaving. Here, let me put the, put this a little bit closer so you can see. So I like to weave in between the nails back and forth. Okay. And it helps to just move the design or the wood surface rather than you kind of doing weird yoga positions to try to wrap the wire around. Okay, and then I like to go back the opposite way. So once you wrap it around, here, let me see if I can get a better close up. So you kind of do like a crisscrossing in between the nail heads like that.
Okay, now once I did that part, I wrapped the wire around the nails. So this kind of just gives a final outline like this. You can either go around each nail if you want, but if it's a straight line, then I kind of just go around and then wrap it at the end here. Right there, back down. So anywhere there's an angle, I kind of, that's where I wrap the wire so make sure it stays in place. Okay. Now, after you do that, I wrap, I do a line of wire basically on the inside perimeter to give even more definition. Again, this part is kind of optional. Um, I've done some projects where I don't do that and it looks perfectly fine, but I feel like this kind of gives it a nice little clean edge to it. So if there are some nails that are kind of out of place that kind of straightens it out, and especially if you're doing um, one color wire, it kind of just gives it, in my opinion, just a, a clean finish. Okay. And that's it. So once you get to the end here, you take your nipper tool and you use the angle side of the cutter. So basically this part goes towards uh, where you want to cut like this. So it gives a nice clean edge. And so you can either tuck this in or you can cut the little tails. I'm just going to cut them so that way they're out of the way. Okay. There you go. There's your nice little finished house. Okay. So now for the creme de la creme of the bling, we have our crystal. And this one, I think we need some scissors. Grab some scissors. Yeah. Okay, see, so look at that crystal. Love it. So shiny and bright. So all you have to do is just take a little piece of the wire. inches long and then when you're done with the wire I like to tuck it back into that little groove here so it doesn't unravel and unwind like that keep it in this place feed the wire through the crystal bead and you kind of just freeform it and then shape it like a little U so it kind of weaves through the wire here Don't want to get it too far because then you can't leave it. There we go. Now I kind of just twist this part together. And then cut that off. Make sure it's tucked in there so it doesn't poke anybody. It's a little low, oops, 
Oh, you know what? It fell out. So I didn't get it in all the way. Let's try it again. I guess I should start and do another piece of wire since I cut this one. Take it back in. Now we got it. Okay, try this again. Cut the ends. Tuck this inside so you don't see it. And there you go. What do you think? Easy, right? That took what? Like 25 minutes of that? So if anybody else has any other questions, um, I was so happy to share this with you guys. Simple project if you wanted to customize this. Another one was if you want to put somebody's name or a family name, or somebody just bought a house or they moved, you can put their name here or their address. You can either do it with like a wood burner or like a silhouette or Cricut and put that on here. Um, you can put the year or some kind of message on the back. So so many creative ideas with this. Uh, I thought it was something fun to do for this year since it's been a little crazy. And, and that's it, yeah, if you have any questions, just uh, feel free to reach out to us. Again, this video is gonna be available on the Michael's YouTube channel in about 24 to 48 hours and on their website. Um, but yeah, that's it. I thank you everybody. Meredith, does anybody have any other questions? I think that we are good. I actually learned so much from you explaining how to do this project. Um, and the best idea that we've heard in the chat room, I don't know if you saw it as it scrolled by, but we have your next project is to do the state of Pennsylvania and then Ooh. the heart where you live. Yes. Right, isn't that a great, great, um, Carolyn, that was Carolyn's idea. And then just one thing, somebody had, had asked, can you show what it looks like from the side view? Yes. So people can see those stacks of wires coming in. So it's, it, it ends up being very thin, but really neat from the side as well. Exactly. You don't really need to layer it as much. You don't need to fill the whole length of the nail. Um, you're basically just making it dimensional. So all you're seeing is from the front, especially if you're going to be hanging this or laying it flat or kind of like in a, uh, one of those plate hanger displays. Um, you can attach, drill a hole through it and put um, some string or yarn and hang it on that way. But yeah, there's, that's just a few layers. You can go as deep as you want. You can use different colors of wire and add some gradation or ombre effect to it. Um, but yeah, I love the state idea. That's a great idea. <laughs> oh, and somebody's asking, I was hoping that we would, we would see some more of your projects. You wanna do a little show and tell since we have some time at the end? Sure. <laughs> Let's see, okay, so if you wanted to get really blingy, um, so I experimented a lot with different mediums and techniques. This is actually with alcohol ink um, as a background. And then I did a resin finish and then added Swarovski crystal flatbacks to the nail heads to cover the nails. 
So this is uh, with the magenta color and the green color artistic wire. Um, and it kind of gives it a whole new different dimension with the flatbacks. I love the bling on that. It gives a nice uh, contrast. Let's see, what else do we have here? We have my no problema llama. <laughs> is it easier to see overhead or in front? What do you think guys? Uh, probably overhead. Yeah, I think so. Yep, here's my llama. Who doesn't, look, who doesn't love a llama, right? And then I left this blank if you wanted to put like a saying on here. I was gonna do like no problema on there. Something fun and cheeky. Let's see what else. This is one of my personal favorites. Um, this is a butterfly. And I again, it's the gradient colors of the artistic wire done with an alcohol ink background with a resin finish. And it's just all layering of the wire. See, and as you can tell, like the nails aren't straight, but you can't really see. So if you're if you're doing this and you're worried, concerned about the nail placement and it's not looking right, from this angle, it, it looks perfect. And what I did here is I actually colored the, the tops of the nails, the nail heads with um, an acrylic, uh, acrylic paint markers to match the wire. So it kind of blends in with the design. Let's see what else. Another one of my favorites is a rainbow. You can see all the, the scope of the wire there. This is just with a wood surface and I painted the wood surface and distressed it a little bit. And we have lots of designs actually on our website, if you're looking for more inspiration with templates on our beetleon.com, we have uh, a lot of projects with, with the templates and nail heads and the step-by-step -step instructions as well. Any other questions? I think we're good. People loved show and tell. Uh, thanks guys. <laughs> I love show and telling you too. <laughs> Well, if nobody has any other questions, uh, feel free to watch this later, share with your friends, tag us. If you make something, um, make it with Michaels or hashtag beat on. And we'd love to see you again. All right. And as Meredith says, happy beating. I'm going to say hammer time. <laughs> Bye guys. Thank you.